got myself one of the big guys. Look at the size of that blue jay. He's just sitting there perked. He's just eating all the bird seed. Yeah, I see you, buddy. He's too big, so he can't get to the bird seed that's in the, uh... Oh my gosh, he's just, like, stuffing his gullet. What are you gonna put all that? Like, where are you putting all the seed? Look at that! Do you have someone to feed? Like, do you have... Are you putting it in your crop? Jeez. What? Is that another one? Or is that the same one? Are you really coming back for more? Hey, those are my plants. Those are, those are a little bit more off limits. Oh, thanks for picking up after yourself, I guess. <laughs> Look at him go. Hey, get out of the foxglove. That's dangerous. That's amazing. Wow. All right, somebody is very happy that I had that little hidden bowl of bird seed on the deck again. Look at you. Hi, buddy. Are you getting enough of the food there? <laughs> Blue jays are so big. I think that's something a lot of people forget is just how big they are. so loud we can hear you from over here. That squirrel right up there is tearing the bark off that tree for some reason. Are we gonna stop now that we know? No, there he goes again. So he's busy digging something out to eat from over there. That's really cool. Hello guys. <laughs> Look at that wiggle. They've been working here for a while, huh? Are they just like wild domestic geese or ducks? <gasps> Darling, look at his jaw move! That's so cool! You got fluff on your nose. Hi, you two! Look how big their feet are! You guys are so big! You're so pretty, I've never seen somebody like you before. Look at the size of his feet! Oh my gosh! I've never really seen a duck properly waddle before. That's hilarious. There you go, buddy. There you go. And then, yeah, so we also have duck right here. And then the juvenile heron is busy fishing. He's in hunting posture. Whoops, there we go. He's busy fishing in the background back here. And you can hear the red shoulder hawk screeching in the distance. So there's a lot of activity going on over here. Hi buddy! You're a pretty big duck. He is butler duck. Because he wants to be just right, like he says to get all his feathers just right. Very handsome. I have never ever seen that. Like I'm sure there's tons of people who are like, oh that's just a such and such. That's the common duck. Yeah, that's the common duck. What are you thinking? But I've never seen him look. He's so pretty. He's pretty. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Butler Duck. Man, that hawk is upset about something. Yeah, maybe he doesn't like these ducks. <laughs> It's raining! It's raining even though it's a beautiful blue sky. It's a sun shower, you guys. I love these. When I was little, my grandma convinced me that they were good luck, like a blessing, and I totally believed her for years and years and years after that. It took till I was much, much older before I realized that when it rains in the, the day and there's a sun shower, and I actually realized it was raining because I could see the little pond down there and see that it's covered in the, the ripples of the rain hitting. I didn't realize it was raining till then, but my grandma 
told me, my Didi grandma told me years and years and years ago that when it does this, that means it's like a blessing from angels or something like that. And I used to think that it was like something super special and really like a, like a golden little blessing like that for a long time. Like there was something special about this rain. And I just, I love it. It's so fun. It just brings back that memory of her again. I wonder why I've been thinking about her so much lately. That's really fun. And this is just so cool. Bright, beautiful sunlight, clear blue skies, and lots and lots of rain coming down. Are you enjoying the food? You're out kind of late. Oh dear, Chips is still up. You're out kind of late, little tripping sparrow. Are you having fun? The sun is actually setting, but this little one seems to be pretty happy to grab some extra food. I really love these little guys. They have such bright little heads. They're not like yeah. brightly colored, but whoa, did you guys see that cardinal go up there? Cardinal. They're not brightly colored, but they're just very distinctively marked. I like it. Ooh, cardinal. <laughs> that was like jump kick. Well, well then. Look at this, you guys. I swear, every time I turn around, lately this tomato plant has just put out tons of new leaves. This is so cool. Our little yellow pear tomato plant. We planted these seeds together and I, I swear he's growing. I mean, look at that. I swear he's grown several inches just since like a couple days ago. It really loves this heat and the humidity and the rain. It is a very, very happy tomato plant and I'm so excited because we planted him together and hopefully he'll like survive long enough that we'll be able to eat some of his tomatoes before it's time to move because I'm not sure if Chips is going to be very happy if I try to fill our moving van again with a bunch of live plants that I fret over. That was a little hectic just for like a four hour drive from up in the mountains to our home here. I'm not sure how it would take like a two day trip all the way back up to Michigan. Hmm. And then suddenly it's the end of the day and <laughs> and I'm sort of amazed. I think I really love dawn more than sunset because dawn is just, it's the time to come outside and listen to the birds singing. It's the time to just kind of like savor a warm cup of peach tea and feel the day beginning to unfurl in front of me. I think honestly one of my favorite things about becoming an adult has been that I get to savor my mornings. <laughs> <laughs> because when I was growing up, you know, as a kid, you have to get up early because you have to go to school on time. And then when I was a teenager, I had to get up even earlier because I had to make it to like my morning seminary classes before school. And then I had to make it to zero hour at school. And when I was in high school, it was all about like waking up super early because I had to do all of my studies or I would stay up super late because I took so many AP courses. And I, I was one of those students where I thought my world was going to end, like physically going to just explode if I didn't get straight A's. And of course I didn't get straight A's, but I would try that hard. Um, man. <laughs> and so I would stay up really, really late at night. And so my mornings represented not enough sleep and having to make it to seminary and having to make it to school. And then later it represented, I remember actually college was okay because most of my college classes started at 8 a.m., which was like three hours later than I was used to waking up uh, in high school. And I remember getting out of my morning classes at like 11 noon and looking around and going, that was it, I'm done. I'm done with everything for the day. Are you kidding me? It was so freeing. So college was really freeing like that. And then working was kind of, eh, it was hit or miss. Being um, like a CNA was the hardest part because shifts normally began at eight in the morning. And CNA is, man, certified nurse assistant, that is a bit of grueling work. And then my retail jobs usually started later in the evening or afternoons. Um, so that wasn't so bad, but I still had to answer to somebody else for what to do with my mornings. And so I really love, most of all, out of everything that I have accomplished in my adult life, to be completely honest, I really love the fact that I get to wake up in the mornings now and have control over my morning. I get to stay home as long as I want in the morning and sip my tea and I don't feel rushed. And I still wake up at like six in the morning, every morning, and that's fine. <laughs> but I think that's one of my biggest accomplishments in life is just having my mornings and not feeling rushed about it. So I really love that. There's a little random blurb about why I love Dawn so much. It just feels like the best time of the day 
to kind of breathe deep because everything is still, the potential of the day is still there. And then sunset, I'm not quite as sad about anymore. For the past few months when the sun would go down, I'd get so frustrated because I have so much work to do and I will always have, I'm beginning to realize that, I will always have more on my schedule and more planned that I want to do than I will be able to do. Because even the days when I finish recording enough for the main channel, I am like, okay, now I need to pre-record for these, or okay, now I need to work on some new series in the background. So I'm always gonna have more than I can ever realistically accomplish on the main channel that I want to do. And I just kinda have to accept that. I'll figure out how to roll with it as I go, but that's why evenings used to really upset me because it'd be like, I didn't complete what I wanted to do, and now I'm kind of realizing, Siri, you're never going to complete what you want to do. Just do your best and provide what you can to everybody. So today I did manage to get um, a bit of zoo crafting done. That was really fun. And it's always so fun to talk about this like behind the scenes vlogging for what I did with the day on the main channel because you guys kind of get like the inside scoop on my creative thought processes. <gasps> oh, and you guys might see fireflies. I just saw a couple fireflies go off off the deck. So keep an eye behind me. You might see some fireflies while we're talking. That's really cool. Oh, there's more. Oh, okay. Yeah, you guys might see some fireflies. We'll have to see if they show up like in the in the background. That's so cool. Fireflies. I love them. Or light butt bugs as I called them in zoo crafting once because I could not for the life of me while I was recording remember what a lightning bug or like a firefly was. <laughs> So I was just like, you know, the glowy light butt bugs, and a lot of people say that's some of their favorite memories of like silly zoo crafting moments. But yeah, speaking of zoo crafting, got some work in there done finally. I just had like this creative block, and I was paralyzed by it, and I just sat down this morning, and I was like, let's do it. And I kind of like tossed an orange back and forth in my hands, and then promised myself I could eat the delicious orange if I recorded the episode, and I managed to pull it off. So we had the Chocobo Chicks hatch, and it was really fun because what I did and what I love to do in my series is straw polls for the viewers to be able to vote in, and the straw poll in this case determined what kind of colored Chocobo babies would hatch out of those eggs. So it was really fun to give that control over to the community, and then I like randomized what colors could happen for each choice and didn't explain what those colors were for the poll options. I just knew that I had notes on what the corresponding things would be. Oh, isn't that fun? I think that's a, not a kingfisher, it's a something. It sounds kind of like an angry kingfisher, but it's not. But uh, then the community voted on the clutch choices, like the, the bird clutches and what they would hatch into. And I really loved it, because I love passing off that kind of randomness in my series, all of my series. I love random generators, but you guys probably have figured that out by now. And then, um, yeah, Chocobo Chicks hatched, and then I worked on Warriors, and that's actually all I've managed to do today because Warriors took me like four hours today. It was just a lot of writing, it was a lot of recording, a lot of blooper moments, and actually putting the bloopers together for the Warrior Cat series has taken so much stress away because I have just made it so that like when I mess up and say the wrong thing, like clack for some reason when I'm trying to say cats a lot on that series it'll come out clats the clats probably because it's like clans of cats and so somehow that gets jumbled into the clats <laughs> so I used to get so frustrated and I would almost be like in tears of anger over how I just wouldn't be able to speak the way I needed to to record the like scenes where I would have stuff written out that I needed to speak and now that I just take those scenes and I go, okay, well that messed up, but let's try again and just copy paste them into the War of Cats bloopers folder, it's this huge stress relief because it's like I can turn something positive into what's very frustrating for me. Because as you guys have probably noticed, I sometimes don't speak correctly and I kind of have a bit of a speaking uh, quirk, I would really call it. It's not really like a disability, but I do have a bit of a speaking quirk and it makes it very, very difficult for me to pronounce certain words correctly. Um, and it, I've had it my whole life, and one of the most frustrating memories I have growing up was my mom, like, interrupting me and correcting me all of the time. <laughs> and she meant it lovingly, and she's right, it's very important for you to appear educated by being able to pronounce things correctly. But it was so 
like humiliating because I just wanted to be able to say things correctly and I would be trying to like even fight with my mom as a teenager or have a serious discussion with her and she would just interrupt me and correct me. And I still do it so much that Chips will actually correct me and he's an English professor. It doesn't quite irk me as badly when he does it but it still kind of makes me go hmm. And it's not his fault, it's my tongue's fault and how I'm speaking. So I'm glad that he does it, but it is still kind of like a hmm sort of moment. And then when people online do it, that's when I really like have a hard time because I get that so often. Everyone's like, Siri, it's not pronounced like that, it's pronounced like this. And sometimes they're wrong. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I, I did it right. I tried really hard. And I actually, uh, you guys probably have no idea about this because I've never mentioned it. Sometimes before I record, I will sit down and look up how to pronounce things online and practice because I have such difficulty with pronouncing things sometimes. So it is really frustrating when people will leave comments like, Siri, you mispronounced such and such. And that's just a mosquito, not a not a firefly light butt bug. Go away. Shoot. <laughs> shoot. You can't you can't sting me. Go shoo. But yeah, that's just a little little FYI in the background. But the whole point of that ramble is that with the Warrior Cat series, I have taken that really frustrating experience of mispronouncing things and turned it into something where we can all laugh about it together and people like it. And I like it because then I'm like almost excited. It's like, okay, what's going to come out of my mouth this time? Is it going to end up being a Warrior Cat's blooper worth episode sort of thing? So that's really fun. So yeah, it took me like four or so hours. Um, to record the Warrior Cats episode today just because I kept messing up and then bless his heart Chips kept coming in and kind of like interrupting me and I have a very hard time. I can almost always just keep recording when he walks in the room because I'm in the kitchen. I'm in their living room kitchen and you know he'll want food which is a normal human thing to do and I can almost always just keep recording but not when I am role playing as cats. I feel like there's a line drawn there and then I get too embarrassed and I can't keep talking. <laughs> so I'll have to stop, I'll have to wait till he goes away. So it took about four hours today just to produce that episode. It took about an hour to produce the, um, the episode for zoo crafting because I had to do some setup before. So that's about five hours of recording, prep work and actual recording. And then about two hours, about two, maybe, maybe an hour and 25 minutes of processing and editing and uploading uh, as well. So just to give you guys, go away little mosquito, just to give you guys a little bit of insight, I only did two videos today, but those two videos took me probably eight hours, <laughs> which is awful, probably seven, eight hours altogether for all of the work it took behind the scenes too. Which is awful, but it helps me feel better. But yeah, anyway, I'm rambling. I guess the light butt bugs aren't going to hang around. You guys have learned some random interesting things behind the scenes with Siri. And tomorrow I hope to be a little bit more organized with my vlogs. And everything's so noisy out here. I think that's the other reason I don't like it in the evening. Well, I like the bullfrogs, but I don't like the way the AC units start going off and the way that the like road is so noisy because people are going home from work. I really like it early, early, early in the morning when it's just the birds. So maybe we'll get a little bit more of that kind of sound when we move. But for now, I'm, just, I'm still going to savor it because I love this deck. And I'm really going to look back one day on these vlogs, sitting here rambling to you guys, sitting next to my adorable little tomato plant, and remember being here and the super loud bullfrogs with fondness. So all right, guys, I'm going to let you guys go and get inside before the mosquitoes come and eat me alive. And maybe I can even get back to recording. We'll see. I think I have a story or two left in me for tonight, so I'll see you guys in the morning. Bye, guys. <laughs>